My name is Sophie Schneider, and I'm this year's Master of Ceremonies for today's Hockington Memorial Day ceremony. I'm 16 years old and a sophomore at Hockington High School, and I'm very happy to be here with all of you today. Memorial Day is so much more than a long weekend. It is so much more than just one day. Today, May 30th, we honor those lives lost while serving in the U.S. Armed Forces. Every step forward we take in the United States, we carry the memory of these brave men and women on our shoulders. It is so important to recognize these people so that their memory and all that they sacrificed is never forgotten. Please stand for the presentation of colors by the Boy Scouts, followed by the salute to the flag by the Girl Scouts. We stop to remember and give thanks for our servicemen and women around the world and their families who are sacrificing for us right now. And again, in the quiet of your hearts, if you would like to, please speak their names. We stop to remember and give thanks for the freedoms and the bounty of this country in the quiet of your hearts, if you would like to. Speak, uh, please name these. And lastly, we stop to remember and give thanks for the benefits of living in this wonderful community in the quiet of your hearts, if you would like to. Please name these benefits. Our Father, since you are the ultimate source of everything good, as we remember and thank others today, I also thank you, knowing that you are the ultimate protection. Lord, freedom and good living come at the cost of sacrifice. We see this in our land and we see this in our faith. Help each one of us to be willing to sacrifice, to make our families, our community, our country 
and our world a better place. Amen. Please be seated for the music selection of our Hockington High School band. that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation, or any nation, so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives so that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here, have consecrated it, far beyond our poor power to add or detract. The world will little know, nor long remember, what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living, rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead, we take increased devotion to that cause for which they took their last full measure of devotion. That we here highly resolve that these dead shall have not died in vain, that this nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Thank you.
Father Cannon is the pastor here at St. John's The Evangelist Parish and a former Navy chaplain. Please stand and welcome Father Cannon to recite a prayer. She's at uh, well done, Emilia. And part of those words that Mia said from the President Lincoln, it's altogether fitting that we are here. And uh, to thank uh, you know, the organizers here. And first and foremost, of course, uh, to acknowledge before us our veterans. Thank you for serving and thank you for your sacrifice. It's wonderful to see so many. see so many people here and especially to see so many of our young people and your presence is very very much appreciated and we are reminded that we're here really as a country as a nation to remember and pray for all those and honor all US men and women killed or missing in action in wars and conflicts. And also we're here today, this morning, to remember in a special way too, those families, for those individuals this day, it's not just another Monday holiday, but a day of painful memory, to remember loved ones, family members, and comrades uh, who have fallen before us. And greater love has no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. Today is a twofold call to remember all that has gone, to all that has been endured, sacrificed, and suffered in the past. And also for us in the present, it's a call to duty, to be mindful of our duties and responsibilities under God, to country, family, and neighbor. And so let us pray. Almighty and eternal Father, Lord God and Judge of the nations, the sober heart to come before you this Memorial Day, to pause for a moment and call to mind all the men and women who have died in the service of our nation. Please look with mercy upon these brave, our brave and selfless brethren who did not shirk from their task but gave themselves completely to the defense of our nation, for the cause of liberty, religious freedom, and all those values that we hold so dear. Grant them a place of refreshment, light, and peace in your eternal kingdom. We also pray and remember those currently serving in the armed services. Lord, hold our troops in your loving hands. Protect them as they protect us. Bless them, their families, and their families for the selfless acts they perform for us in this our time of need. Amen. You may remain, uh, you may see, be seated. Um, first, we have the chairman of Veterans Celebration Committee, Mike Whelan, to give a speech. Welcome, Mr. Whelan. Thank you. Uh, the ultimate sacrifice, we use this phrase to define the loss of one's life for a cause. On Memorial Day, we turn our thoughts to the servicemen and women that we have lost in defense of our country. The passage of time that will make our losses more bearable, but will not let us forget. Hopefully, those Gold Star families realize that their loved one's death ultimately resulted in passing on life to someone else. The words of thanks from us and those of future generations expressed on Memorial Day are surely heard by those heroes, as our faith assures us there is an afterlife. True sacrifices are said to be made without regret. However, one American soldier from the past reminds us there is always an exception. During the Revolutionary War, 
General Washington needed a volunteer to spy behind the British lines. There was only one 21-year-old who stepped up, and knowing that capture would result in certain death, took comfort, realizing his efforts would save lives. After his capture, while standing on the gallows, the young Nathan Hale proudly stated, I regret that I have but one life to give for my country. It's possible that some of the actual facts of that event may have been embellished over the years, but the courage and patriotism that Nathan Hale showed us as he was facing death has been an inspiration for dozens of generations. The battles of our Revolutionary War were waged by men using their strength and skill, coming face to face with their opponent. So much has changed since then, and modern warfare's goal is to inflict casualties without risk. However, however, many American soldiers continue to be in harm's way. So please pray for them on this Memorial Day. Thank you. Next, I would like to invite Seaman Kevin Nathan, a U.S. Navy reservist, to come up and talk about a plaque that honors the Reverend King at Mount Auburn Cemetery. Good morning. <clears throat> so here in town up on Mayhew Street, there's a flagpole dedicated in honor to a man named James B. King. After researching Reverend King, I'm reluctant to admit that there isn't a lengthy paper trail or a real biography, but I was able to find certain things, and those were important things. James B. King arrived in Hopkinton sometime in the late 1800s after serving as a chaplain in the Civil War. This service may explain some of the reasons why he became so quick, he became such a hallowed member here in Hopkinton. How fitting it is we meet here in this church today, his old parish. It's not exactly clear how long he lived here. I don't think it was more than 10 or 15 years, but it's obvious that he made an indelible impact here in Hopkinton, one that we should all strive to emulate. In addition to preaching sermons on Sundays, Reverend King also participated in recreational veterans meetings and connected with other soldiers, some of whom he fought alongside. His presence and kind words provided solace to those individuals still battling with demons uh, being haunted by the Civil War. These actions show how valuable Reverend, King and Reverend King's impact was to Hopkinton, not only as a priest, but as a mentor, friend, and confidant. I urge all people to try and make an impact like this on behalf of their community. Find someone in need of assistance and help them, and then help them again. Donate, whether it be time or money, because both matter. And lastly, make a goal to make a difference, a positive difference. Interpret that however you may, but I encourage you to improve on something that's a little dilapidated or in need of fixing, spiritual or tangible. If you do a good job, maybe you can have a flagpole if you need money too. The last thing I want to say is that I hope everybody takes the time to appreciate the veterans. This shouldn't be refined to holidays like Memorial Day or Veterans Day, but every day. However, the impact of their actions are felt more on days like today. So do it now, and do it while it's on your mind. Thank you. Next we will have John Cotino, who is serving his third year as Vice Chairman of Board of Selectmen. Welcome, Mr. Cotino. I'm so honored to be asked by the chair to again um, speak on behalf of the Board of Selectmen. Thank you to the Veterans Committee, Mike Whalen, and all that work to make this ceremony possible. This event truly represents the best of Hopkinton. It's a time when the few, the proud, and the grateful come to pay respects for those who took it upon themselves to be the tip of the spear. We gather together to pay our respects to those who were willing to sacrifice everything for their fellow countrymen. I believe that, I have always believed that this event is Hopkinton's finest of the year. Yes, even better than the one we had last month. This event doesn't have a rock band, famous singers, no international TV coverage, no parties, no t-shirts, and no commemorative hats. What this event does have 
is the heart and soul of Hopkinton. The hearts and soul of, again, the few, the proud, and the grateful. Today truly embodies the spirit and the patriotism that upholds this nation. As many of you know, I always fly our nation's flag outside of our home. Bearing this flag is a symbol of loyalty and respect and of freedom. I'm proud to do so. However, this is not the patriotism that inspires a country. The patriotism that brought us all here today is more than the pride it takes to chant USA, USA at a sporting event. It's deeper than that. It is more than just pride, it's gratitude. What have brought our country together on the first Decoration Day, and what unites us when our soldiers came home after World War II, was the same emotion that overcame America when we landed on the moon. Not simply a feeling of pride, but a feeling of deep respect and appreciation. It's been said that the character of a community is, re is revealed in the way that it treats its loved ones. Gathering here today, bowing our heads respect for those who made the ultimate sacrifice is the type of patriotism that is handed down from generation to generation. The type that affects an entire community. The type that is more meaningful than any symbol. We have to be a country where every citizen carries the responsibility for the entire nation and really demonstrates their respect rather than just chanting it. Remember, remember that all the men and women out there in uniform, consciously under an oath to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States and defend it against all enemies. How does one say thank you to that level of devotion? I don't know. Pay for a cup of coffee when you see a vet at the coffee shop. On a hot day, bring a bottle of water to the police officer on traffic duty. Or volunteer to better your community. This is true patriotism. Although we can all appreciate the outfits of red, white, and blue, and the small flags pinned up on our lawns, remember that showing respect is more than just a symbol. It's the way one acts, not just today, but every day. Show respect for those who have our backs, respect for our men and women in blue, respect for our first responders, and most importantly, respect and prayers for the men and women who were and are the tip of the spear. Patriotism founded in pride is great, but patriotism rooted in gratitude, appreciation, and awe is what truly defines our Memorial Day. Thank you very much. Carolyn Dykema is our Massachusetts State Representative. We are lucky enough to have had her representing us for the last seven years. Welcome, State Representative Dykema. Good morning. It is my honor and privilege to be here in Hopkinton today to recognize Memorial Day. And I first want to say uh, and recognize all of our veterans here today, as well as our active duty military uh, who have joined us, and, and thank you on behalf of all of us. The centuries of our nation's history have been characterized by the fight for freedom freedom that's the foundation of all that we love and cherish. In gathering today for Memorial Day, we remember the lives of all those who have lived and gave their, themselves for that cause. Today's young people, and I want to echo Father Cannon's comments about how wonderful it is to see so many of our young people in the audience today. Our own children and grandchildren have lives of extraordinary opportunity. Their limits are set only by their own dreams and ambition because their parents, grandparents, and great-grandparents have sacrificed for them. By assembling here today, we teach our children, the stewards of our future, that the lives we live as Americans come with a mandate, and that mandate is service. For those of us who are civilians, that means remembering and honoring the men and women who gave their lives to secure the privilege of living this great experiment, our democracy. Most of us won't make the ultimate sacrifice for our country, as have those we honor here today. And we have a duty to those who did, to give back, to hold ourselves to the highest standards set by those who have come before, and to exercise our rights and our freedoms with respect and with gravity. In the words of President John F. Kennedy, as we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation 
is not to utter the words, but to live by them. I recently attended an event at the Trottier School in Southborough where an articulate young woman named Lindsay Arsenal spoke to middle school students about her older brother, Brian. Brian was an army specialist from Northborough who was killed in action in Afghanistan in 2014. Her personal reflections, her pride in her brother, and how her life changed forever by his death struck a profound chord with the students who were not much younger than she was. You could see by the looks on their faces that they were beginning to understand, perhaps for the first time, what Memorial Day was really about. Lindsay's words conveyed a powerful lesson about patriotism and what it means to be an American. It was a lesson that every one of our children need to hear. This past Friday in South Boston was the dedication of the Fallen Heroes, Heroes Memorial to Brian Arsenal and all those lost in Iraq and Afghanistan. At the ceremony, Paul Monty, father of Sergeant First Class Jared Monty, who was killed in Afghanistan in 2006, spoke these words with the conviction of a father who had lost a child. Freedom isn't free. It's been paid for. It's been paid for the men and women from Massachusetts and across our country who've been killed in Iraq and Afghanistan, the millions of our citizens who have given their lives in service to our country since the founding of our nation. And as we commemorate the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War, I'd like to personally recognize as well all of those who perished in Vietnam on behalf of our country. Today, we honor, honor all of those who paid that price for us. To our fallen, we honor you. To the families of those who have lost, to our veterans, and to all those who serve today, on behalf of a grateful town, a grateful commonwealth, we thank you. And may God bless these United States of America. It's now time to uh, introduce our guest speaker. So uh, this, this man uh, sent his bio to me ahead of time, so I'd have, we'd have a proper introduction, but uh, he didn't send in much information about himself. Uh, he proudly spoke of uh, his family's heritage here in town. First Lieutenant Mike Foley was born in Washington, D.C., grew up in Maryland, graduated from the United States Air Force Academy, in, 19, in 2014 with a Bachelor of Science degree in Systems Engineering. He's also a graduate of the Air Force Acquisition School. But his family has deep roots here in Hopkinton, as well as history of service to this town and the nation. His father, David J. Foley, a native son of Hopkinton, and I knew him very well. Uh, we went to high school together. Uh, he graduated from Hopkinton High School in 1966. Lieutenant Foley's grandmother, Margaret Foley, who's a teacher here in Hopkinton. I know many of you out there had her in the fifth grade. Lieutenant Foley is currently stationed here at the Air Force Base in Bedford, where he serves as a development engineer. He's here today accompanied by his girlfriend, Tiffany. Please welcome him, our native son, back to Hopkinton, Lieutenant Mike Foley. is looking up here thinking, oh God, they've got a lieutenant to talk. Uh, it's well known, we're just, we know just enough to be dangerous to everybody. <laughs> but for some reason, they decided that I was good enough to speak. I know that uh, I volunteered as quickly as I could because uh, my family is from Hopkinton. Uh, the lieutenant's bars I'm wearing were actually made by Marie Madigan, who served in World War II. She's one of the first uh, female officers in the Army and she helped direct the uh, Korean War Memorial here in Hopkinton. Uh, so today is about memorializing those who've come before. And it's not just about remembering, it's also about a call to each and every one of us who is still alive, still here today, 
and everybody talks about being thankful, being grateful, and I want to echo what several people have already said since I think it's the most important part, is that it's also a call to duty and a call to service. Not everybody's going to serve in the military, <clears throat> not everybody's going to go off to war, not everybody, thankfully, will live in a time of war. Um, unfortunately, we do now, and it's a reality that every day there are more and more people added to the role of honor of each of the services, the names of those who've fallen. But there'll come a time when we'll live at peace again, and as has been said, there's no such thing as a good war and no such thing as a bad peace. And that's when the call to service for all of those who don't wear the uniform comes to the forefront. It's easy to honor those who serve. We talk about buying a cup of coffee. And that's wonderful. There are tons of veterans out there who are incredibly grateful in their families for each and every act of kindness that's brought to them. But the call to service is two parts. There is also the call to serve your nation as a citizen, as a mother, as a father, as a teacher, as a student. Every single job has merit and value if you look at it as a part of making our country great. The atmosphere that allows each and every person to become a freestanding paragon of virtue for everybody around them. The, the seaman here talked about the uh, chaplain from the Civil War who in a short a time as a decade made such an impact on a small town that he was memorialized for all future generations on a uh, flagpole out there. There's a uh, famous quote, the Memorial Day Order, that was given to the Grand Army of the Republic and was meant to serve for each generation afterwards. Let no vandalism of avarice or neglect, no ravages of time testify to the present or to the coming generations that we have forgotten as a people the cost of a free and undivided republic. So you can look at that. At the time, he was literally ordering people to go string garlands of flowers over the graves of those who'd fallen in the Civil War because they had ensured, as Lincoln had alluded to in his Gettysburg Address, that freedom would not die from this great nation and it would not die from the world. Government of the people, for the people, and by the people. And that's the duty that you're all called to by those who've gone before, those who've served. They signed up and they signed a blank check up to and including their lives so that those that they left behind, those that they loved, would be able to continue to live to the fullest of their ability, the fullest of their potential in a free country. And government of the people and for the people means that it's your job to, maybe you'll serve in the state government, the local town selectmen, or maybe you'll serve on a community board for whichever activity you get involved in, whether it's the PTA or some small group feeding the homeless. That's the of the people. That's stepping up to your potential to be able to serve those around you. And there's the government for the people, which means that uh, all of our elected representatives have the duty to make sure that each and every person is taken care of whether that means ensuring that we have a community that raises everybody up, or whether that means making sure that nobody gets forgotten or left behind. And then there's government by the people, which means that each and every person here has to stand tall at the front of their town, their state, their nation, their family, or maybe it's just in front of their class to give a speech. Um, Everybody's given an opportunity at some point in their life, whether it was reading the Gettysburg Address here today, or um, whether you were a teacher like my grandmother was for 40 some odd years. I was told she's watching over me, so I better not use poor grammar. <laughs> but it's each and every person's personal mission to find their own calling in the world, whatever it is, whether it's to be the most loving husband, father, or mother, whether it's to be an obedient child and student to your teachers, because I promise there's some good things they will teach you. Whether it's to play beautiful music, maybe somebody from the band here is going to be the uh, playing in the Boston Pops in a couple years, you never know. Whether it's to actually serve in the armed forces, uh, they talk less than a half of a percent of the population living now has served or is serving. 
and that's an incredibly small number. And I'm not saying that everybody should run off and sign up today. It's, again, your personal calling could be anything. Those of us who did sign up, it wasn't so that other people would be like us or so that people would you know, buy us a cup of coffee or come to Memorial Day functions in memory of us because I guarantee that nobody here who has served was hoping to die in combat or hoping to ever see combat even. People signed up because that was their calling. You know, I'm sure our reverends and our priests here talk about callings all the time, whether it's to the ministry, but service comes in many forms, and personally, there are those who did sign that blank check up to and including their lives, and I can guarantee that those who came before are grateful to see so many people out here <clears throat> remembering them not just today, but in a town like this, it seems like nobody has ever forgotten. I unfortunately didn't have the uh, good fortune of growing up here in Hopkinton, but I grew up hearing all kinds of stories about the wonderful things that the town would do, and I can say that from my dad's time back in the 60s, the ceremony hasn't changed too much. He would recognize it today if he'd been able to make it out here. Um, and that's important. There's service being done by people to those who sacrifice so that you can all live here happily. And I think that uh, I can't obviously speak for everybody who came before, but I think that looking out on a town of people like this who are here, they would be very grateful that you remember them. And that's really all that people can ask for who serve is to be remembered and to be cared for. And I think that one option of service that I would like to point out to everybody is there are, there's a BA hospital not too far from here. So if any of you are looking for a calling, those who came before are always looking for help. Those who've gone to Iraq and Afghanistan and came home as wounded warriors or who spent time seeing terrible things and maybe they just need somebody to talk to. You never know who <clears throat> is in need and it doesn't just go for veterans. There are those who have lost somebody. She mentioned the uh, pain of a father who'd lost a son. Those are your neighbors, whether they're here in Hopkinton or around the state. And I think that that is a great calling of service to help those who did sign that check and made it home, but maybe not in one piece, mentally or physically. So, I would like to echo one more time, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Everybody talks that being the last measure of devotion. But laying down your life, it doesn't necessarily mean dying. Uh, sometimes it means offering yourself in complete service to somebody else. Love comes from many different forms, whether it's romantic love or parental love. And for a father or a mother, kids might not believe it, but their parents were once cool, hip people out there in the town <laughs> enjoying life and they give up a lot to raise children. And there are those who become priests and ministers and they give up a lot to minister to their flock, who's all of you. And there are those of you who become teachers, who give up <clears throat> hours of their time and sometimes even their dollars to make sure that all of everybody's children grows up to be successful citizens. We have our first responders who I'm sure that they give up hours of overtime to ensure that they're available to save lives. They train constantly and put themselves in harm's way day in and day out, whether you're an officer of the law, a peace officer, or a first responder to fires, or even just that person who runs into a car crash and drags somebody out and performs life-saving CPR. They've laid down their life because they didn't just learn how to do CPR when they saw somebody bleeding on the side of the road. They've spent hours and years training to be the best that they could in service to their community, their state, their country, their nation. So at the end of the day, Memorial Day is not just to memorialize those who came before, since obviously we are here to do that, but it is also a call to service. Those that came before, they sacrificed their lives for a reason, 
and that was so that you could reach your potential, <clears throat> so that you could serve the country and continue to ensure that freedom doesn't die from this world and that uh, government of the people, for the people, and by the people never perishes from this earth. Please remain standing for the national anthem by the Hawkington High School Band.
enjoy the refreshments. Thank you and have a wonderful day.